2022 is coming to an end, and there were definitely some great games that came out, but also some stinkers and disappointing games. And unfortunately, before we celebrate the best of the year, we are celebrating the worst slash most disappointing. Now, I haven't played every game that came out this year, so I'm just letting you guys know right now, no Saints Row, no Babylon's Fall, no Diablo Immortal, and no Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Also, I don't have enough for a list of games that are outright bad, and I also don't have enough for a list of games that are disappointing. So consider this, I guess, kind of like a worst of the year list, but with how disappointing the game is being a factor for where it places, if that makes sense. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. But before we do that, you know what to do. Check if you're subscribed and hit the bell, leave a comment, or I will burn you. I wanted to give to you, in the last part of your notes here, the significance spiritually of the number 10 in the Bible. Okay, look, I haven't heard too many people talking about Pac-Man World Repack. That's kind of fell under the radar, but I was very excited for it because... It shows that Namco actually remembers that Pac-Man World is a thing. And I will give it this, Pac-Man World Repack is a very faithful remake. Too faithful. And believe it or not, there is such thing as being too faithful. Pac-Man World on the PS1, while being a solid mascot platformer, hasn't aged well through no fault of its own, really. It's just more the games that came out that time. Repack does in fact refine the game, visually, but there are other things from that era that haven't aged well other than the graphics. Like, playing this game feels like I'm playing a PS1 game, but not in a nostalgic way, but in a this game feels outdated kind of way. The game feels clunky and can be frustrating, and there are game overs. I understand the original game had game overs, but they seriously released a game in 2022 with game overs. They couldn't have taken that out. I really wanted to love Pac-Man World Repack, and I didn't hate it, and I've noticed I'm in a minority here, so I'm happy for all of you that liked it, but if Bamco repacks the other two Pac-Man World games, they gotta do more than just make it look pretty. Arc System Works, I like to call them the King of Fighters, as in fighting games, not the, you know, not the King of Fighters franchise. Just look at their output for the past few years. Dragon Ball Fighters, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Guilty Gear Strive, all great games. Notice how I didn't mention DNF Duel. Now DNF Duel isn't necessarily a bad game, and it was playing it rather safe but it's still pretty disappointing. I love the characters as they are all super cool and fun to play, the visuals are super flashy, and the music goes hard. But often when playing this game, it just feels off. Sometimes there is a delay, sometimes there is a mis-input, and sometimes there is a mis-input AND A DELAY! And while I said that the characters are really cool, they all kind of feel like they can't keep up with the game as the game requires you to be all fast and flashy, but the characters are all kind of slow. In addition, minus a few balance patches here and there, there has been no significant updates, and you got a game that, while not bad, could have and absolutely should have been way better than this. So, I'm going to be giving this flavor... Eight and a half out of ten scoops. Who doesn't love Wii Sports? I can recall countless hours of me playing Wii Sports with both my friends and my family. Seriously, how many games can you name that got both of your parents and your goddamn grandma to play? All this made me absolutely ecstatic when it was announced that the Wii Sports IP was returning with Nintendo Switch Sports. And you know what? It came out wasn't full price, and while it was low on content, I was willing to keep playing the game as long as Nintendo updated it. Guess what Nintendo did not do? Nintendo, you had it. You had a game. I was willing to come back to it if you kept updating it, but Nintendo Switch Sports came out in April. It was announced that the first update would be golf. It is now December, and they just added fucking golf. 
While not as egregious as another sports game by Nintendo we'll get to later, you probably know what it is, there is a reason that Wii Sports stayed in the cultural zeitgeist for years, but Nintendo Switch Sports couldn't stay for more than a month. 36. Very close, but that's not it. Let's go to Gary the Retard. What number between 2 and 4? 7. I remember when it was announced that Sony were gonna introduce something like Xbox Game Pass to PS Plus and merge PS Now with it, and then it later got revealed that it's not quite like that, but rather extra tiers of PS Plus that allows you to get some free stuff. And when it came out, I said the extra tier, where you can get a lot of PS4 and PS5 games for free is definitely worth it, but maybe wait on the PS Plus Premium tier till they add more PS1, 2, and P games. And, uh, well, they've added fuck all since then. And yeah, I understand that PS Plus Premium is not a game, but seeing just how Sony seemed to have forgotten about it makes it just as disappointing as some of the other games on this list and yeah they've added a few games since launch they've added like three psb indie games that are like whatever and uh siphon filter 2 and maybe i'm forgetting a game or two which uh siphon filter 2 i understand a lot of you guys have like a lot of nostalgia for that game but uh I hate to bring it to you, but it hasn't aged very well. Sony, once again, you have a great start for PS Plus Premium. This is such a cool thing. In fact, I'd say PS Plus Extra is still worth it, but I'm actually considering canceling because Sony has pretty much unofficially abandoned the service. Okay, Mrs. Puff, what's my final score? Six. Woo! In about a month, we'll be getting a remake of the first Dead Space game. Honestly, the fact that this is actually happening is astounding because of how dormant Dead Space has been, and especially since the director of the series, Glenn Schofield, is not a part of EA anymore. In fact, Glenn Schofield made a spiritual successor to Dead Space in his own studio called The Callisto Protocol, but it really disappoints. Now don't get me wrong, the Callisto Protocol does a lot right. Suspense and tension, when it's there, is done very well. The story premise is very interesting and visually, the game is flawless. The game looks absolutely stunning. However, it all kind of falls apart when you actually play the damn game. What really ruined the game is the broken design of the controls. Never mind the fact that you dodge by moving the control stick as opposed to pressing a fucking button like every other game ever, but it becomes an issue when you're fighting five enemies at once, when you have no room to move, the camera angles are dog shit, and Jacob, our main character, is really fucking slow. So often, you're just fucked. But then sometimes, you can crouch right in front of an enemy and kill them. You can be right in front of them. What the fuck? You have a game that at times can be stupidly easy, and other times be unfairly difficult because of the design of the game. Throw that in with the fact that I'm not quite sure if this game knows what it wants to be, and the Callisto Protocol is a crushing disappointment. Oh, chills. Literal chills. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Sometimes I'll see an indie game and just think to myself, this looks like a sleeper hit. This year, for me, that was Trek to Yomi. A revenge story about a man who loses his mentor in a monochromatic environment and taking inspiration from Akira Kurosawa. That is enough to sell me, but, you know, it's on this list. Now visually, it is stunning, and the story is actually quite engaging. The problem is playing the fucking game. For one, how do you think you turn around in this game, alright? You let me know. How do you think you turn around in this game? Probably just moving the control stick in the opposite direction you're facing, right? Alright, yeah, yeah. WRONG! You press a fucking button. That is incredibly weird and something that by the end of the game I still wasn't used to. But then the parrying mechanic is also very weird where it turns you around automatically. So often you don't realize you're turned around and it really fucks you up in combat. Not to mention the game feels off at times, I often swing my sword at an enemy and should have hit him but then nothing happens and there were also some glitches that made me have to restart from a previous checkpoint. Trek to Yomi could have been one of the greatest games of the year as it has all the materials for one but 
I guess it just fell on its own ambitions, which is, you know, just really disappointing. I remember when Stranger of Paradise came out. The new remake or retelling of the original Final Fantasy game, and I felt like the only person that cared. As a Final Fantasy fan though, I checked it out. And I'll be straight with you, I didn't even finish it. Cause I don't want to. First of all, I have no idea who this game is for, Final Fantasy fans. Well, Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins feels like a Final Fantasy game in name only, as all the characters look nothing like how I would imagine their 8-bit sprite would look like in a PS5 game. So Final Fantasy fans get a game that is unrecognizable, and maybe it's for Souls-like fans, but those people get a poor man's version of a game that had just come out a month before. Additionally, you are incredibly slow, and all your attacks take forever, they have a whole bunch of like input lag and shit, leaving you open for attacks all the time. And I didn't even mention the horrendous inventory system. You have an incredibly small inventory system, but each mission you collect a fuck ton of stuff. That's not that bad, but then the game doesn't let you start the next mission unless you clear up your inventory system. Every single time you want to start another mission, it won't let you if your inventory is full. If you're a fan of Soulsborne games, just play Elden Ring. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy, I just don't play Stranger of Paradise. Oh man, while definitely not the worst game on this list, as seen by its placement, more than any other game this year, Mario Strikers Battle League pissed me off. And it's not really about like, you know, playing the game, it's just everything it does wrong. I have such fond memories playing Mario Strikers on the GameCube and the Wii, so I shit my pants when I found out they were finally bringing back Mario Strikers. But how badly Nintendo fumbled Battle League is absolutely mind-blowing. I'll just go down the list of things they did wrong. For one, the AI is fucking bullshit. Your goalie will miss every single shot, while your opponent's goalie will absolutely block every single shot. No matter how flashy your shot is, no matter how hard you were mashing during the QTE, the opposite goalie is unstoppable. Maybe I'm bad at the game, but I looked online and everyone else that has played this game has this same issue with the AI, so it's not just me, the AI is fucking ridiculous. In addition, the roster is laughable. I feel the roster can only get you so far in a game in terms of content, but this is the basic lineup of Mario characters, minus fucking Daisy. The gear system is pointless, the feature to merge two courts is also pointless, the online doesn't allow you to have like a, two teams of friends battle each other, are you fucking kidding me Nintendo? But worst of all, I bought Mario Strikers Battle League for $60 at launch, and I felt like I've seen everything this game has to offer after one hour. Nintendo, I love you guys, but how the fuck did you fuck up Mario Strikers this bad? What kind of pencil do we take again? Number two, take a number two. <laughs> Looks like you took a big number two. You know, I feel like at a certain point, I was the only one rooting for Gotham Knights. I thought this idea for a game was interesting, where Batman dies and a new wave of crime in Gotham emerges, and now Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin, and Red Hood have to fight enemies. It's a really cool comic storyline that I think should have worked as a video game, but fuck me. For a next-gen exclusive, Gotham Knights honestly looks worse than the Arkham games, which were from over 10 years ago! The story 
also feels very lackluster and has some potential that is completely untapped. There are, of course, many performance issues in the game. Switching between characters is a needlessly annoying process. Each of the individual characters don't feel all that different from each other. But what bothers me the most about Gotham Knights is that there is nothing to do. Gotham feels incredibly lifeless which makes the game feel very boring. The missions suck too. You wanna give me something else to fucking do? And the combat feels very boring too. Just mash the button and you win. You think Mario Strikers Battle League is insulting for $60 for how little it offers? Gotham Knights was 70 and it might just be my most disappointing game of the year because of just how much of a nothing game it is. But it's not my worst game of the year. I'm a Luigi. I'm but a wife. KO the Kangaroo. This game from like the Dreamcast that I don't think anyone really remembers, but it has a bit of a cult following. I didn't even know about this franchise until. They announced that they were bringing it back with a new game this year. And I always get excited whenever we see a new 3D platformer, because it's rare we get one of those. But you either haven't heard of this game, or you have, but you're really confused to see it at the top spot. But while it was only $30, it without question became my worst game of the year without hesitation. Now to be fair, I played this game on the Switch. But I saw some footage of the game on other platforms, and it seems to be fine. So maybe it's just the Switch version, but holy fucking shit, this is embarrassing. For one, the gameplay is nothing special, uh, it is your th average 3D platformer. That didn't put KO the Kangaroo on this list, let alone this high. What does, however, are the bugs and glitches that make me want to break my controller and stab myself in the eyes with the broken controller bits. Let me name you one time the game glitched the fuck out. There is a part of the game where you need to throw a boomerang at a target to open up a door or something like that. I aim, there is like a reticule there, I throw the boomerang, and the boomerang disappears before it hits the target. I tried restarting from the checkpoint, and it still wouldn't work. I had to start the level over again, and then it finally magically worked. Similarly, I had to ground pound onto a certain button that also opens a door. However, for some fucking reason, the game decided that instead of ground pounding by pressing the button in the air, you know, the, the, the ground pound button in the air, I would jump, and then once I land, I roll. Why the fuck is this happening in this game? But worst of all, toward the end of the game, a cutscene played, and the audio sounded like this. I don't believe we... <laughs> I'm not joking, I did nothing to alter that. So. I go, save my game, close the game, and reopen it, so I don't have to listen to that shit. But wanna know what I get for closing the game after saving? I lost all of my data. I don't care how much money this game is, $30, $40, $60, $70, free. Not only should the audio never sound like that. But no game should ever have a glitch where it wipes your entire save. I know this isn't the first time it has happened, but still, I'm trying to make a point here. Games like the Callisto Protocol and Trek to Yomi might be poorly designed. Stranger of Paradise might be a poor man's version of Elden Ring that came out just a month before. And games like Mario Strikers and Gotham Knights might be insulting for how little they offer or the prices they ask for. But I hated every second of KO the Kangaroo, and never have I only spent $30 on a game and felt this ripped off. Fuck this game. Without question, it's my worst game of the year. That was not a fun list. I mean, like, yeah, I got pretty uh, angry there at the end. Seriously, don't reverse psychology me. Do not buy this game, at least on the Switch. Maybe it's better on PS5 or whatever, but yeah, that's my list. What are your worst or most disappointing games of the year? 
uh, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, be sure to subscribe, or I will burn you.